Fish on. This is the one we come here for. Oh yeah, he's got some tail. Need the net for this one, Bill. Right up. He looks to be a good fish. He is, Bill. Really hanging out. Good took brownie. Some, took some line out. Did he? Oh yeah. I know there's a couple of logs out there. There are a couple of logs out yeah. there, but it should be right. Should be right now. These big gingerbine browns are just great. And they just come right in in these bays. How is he? Oh, he is a good fish. <laughs> we come here for Bill. He's a cracker. Well, well, I've been trolling around Jindabyne and catching an odd fish, having a bit of a cast. Lenny Vanderwell's been mud eye fishing from shore, and I thought I'd come over and get the uh, the drum on how to do it and when's the best time to do it. So I noticed you've got some nice long rods with you, about three metres long. Yeah. They're all rigged up. Three metre rods. They're probably you know, six, seven foot drop off okay. to the mud eye. Yeah. I know the guys that, that do really well mud eye fishing are really particular about their gear, so. And I know you are, I can see the, the lines chock a block so you can just runs off freely. So how about we just get down the water, run through it, and you can show me exactly how you rig up, how you hook, how you cast and how you how you open your bail arm and do all the rest of it. Yep, for sure. And hopefully later as as the sun goes down we might actually get a trout or two. I'm yeah, pretty confident the water looks good. The mm. wind's in the, the right direction. You've always got to have the wind offshore. That's right, yeah, to keep your sort of your floats out straight, you don't want your floats. Okay. And we're on a perfect little point here, we've just pulled the boat up, just yeah. cast out there and the bubble floats will hold out. They will. Alright. What we should do is get a mud eye on and Okay, you can run, cast. run through the rig for me and show me what to do. Not a problem. Now Len, I've got your number one outfit here, which is a custom made Paul Williamson, looks like a three and a half metre specific mud eye rod. It is a mud eye rod, yep. About three and a half metres long, long or yep. ten yep. foot in the old scale. That's right, yep. The idea of that is so that you can fish these long droppers between the bubble float and your hook. And your hook, that's right, yeah. So you need to go down 10, 12 foot. Yeah, 12 foot. Sort of. yeah, and to be able to cast it. It's probably maximum that you cast with these 10 foot rods, okay. 3 metre rods, yeah. So you have a drop. Well, real wise, you've got a 2500... Daiwa Capricorn. Daiwa there. Capricorn. What's the line on it? Six pound arm, super fine. Okay. Yeah. And you like having a chocker block full? I do chocker block full. Like it's for um, casting. It just comes off the spool so freely okay. and yeah. And the other reason too is you, you fish with an open bail arm. We do, yes. So when a trout runs you just want the line just to run off freely. Run off freely, well. yeah. The trout doesn't feel a thing sort of thing. Okay. And, um, so 2500 reel, six pound line, chocker block. The heart and soul of the system is your bubble float. Now you've got a coloured bubble float here. I do have coloured um, ones. because that um, just a sight? Well, it's easier to spot out in the water sometimes. Okay. Um, you could be fishing with some buddies that are using clear floats. You, you can sort of pick out yep. where your float is. It's, okay. It can get yeah, hard sometimes, sometimes two floats get together and you're not sure whose is whose what. Whose is whose and you know, trying so to pull So you run, I see you're sensible enough to run one clear and one, one green. green. So you're sitting, that, your two rods together, you know which is which. Which is which, yeah. Okay. The other thing too, the bubble float is also 80% full of water. That's and that's right. your casting weight. That's my weight. You get the distance, yeah. Okay. That's right. Cool. And then you've got a stopper knot here, which is? That's just a bit of rubber tubing. Yep. That I've put the lead through four times. Okay, yeah, four times and it, and it locks so you can't way, move. Yeah, it won't move. And then you've got, in this case, you've got about two and a half metres of, of leader. drop. To drop of leader. Yeah. That's just your main line. That's my main so line. it's yes. all the one line, Straight so through. it's not really, just your six pound main line comes here. Yep. A bubble float stopper on your. Yeah, that's just a running, free running float. Yep. Just runs up your line. And a, and a rubber stopper. Rubber stopper, yeah. Six pound line, all the way down to the hook. Now what hooks do you use for mud eyes? They're a wide gate hook. Okay. You'd want these wide gate hooks, um, because of um, the, the mud eyes we're using here, they're quite large. Fellas. Yeah, they're, they're big. They're big. Yeah. They're huge. Okay. And when you're winging these mud eyes, 
So you hook them through the wings? Through the wings, keep them alive. They can yep. squirt along and, and do their Swim thing. Swim down? Yep. Okay, well how about you show us how to hook them up? Okay. So using a wide gape? Wide gape, yeah. What size? Mm, the size eight, please. Size eight? Yep. And that, that would be about the maximum size I'd use, although... You wouldn't want to go any bigger? No. no. A lot of people use size 12s. Point here at Jindabyne, some of these fish are big. There's some big fish here. Yeah, there's <laughs> some four kilo plus fish here. Yeah. Okay, so, so show us how to hook the mud eye. Okay, what we're going to do, we're going to try and keep him alive, so we're just going to clip him through his wings here. Right. So you really don't go through the body at all? No, you not just, at all. You just pin them through the two wings. So that's a perfect... And so, that's exactly the way you, you hook a mud eye. Hey, like okay. you can see him, he's crawling. Sure. Once he gets in the water, he'll be squirting just, and swimming along yeah. and lifelike. And, and the other thing I'd find too is the black ones, oh, I reckon, are always better than the, <laughs> than the lighter coloured ones, don't you? <laughs> so yeah. At, at the end of the day, there's um, yeah. lots of green ones left. Yeah, yeah. that's right. So then with mud eye fishing, the whole idea is you want to cast as long as you can. Yeah, good. Out of a 40 metre cast. Yeah, yeah. Something 30 like that, metre yeah. cast. 30, 40 metres, yeah. Okay, and you've got to cast with this long dropper between your bubble float and your bait. And your bait, and I've got to keep it off the ground. And that's the long rod. And that's you've got to keep it off the ground as exactly well. Exactly, yeah. Okay, so show us the go, show us how you cast. Okay. Let's get behind a bit like that. Get the mud eye off the bottom. That's sensational. And you can see the two splashes. Yeah. I can see my bait and the float hit. Yep, at the yep. same time, so they're not going to get tangled. That's right, yeah. And that's gone 30. Like, I mean, I can hardly see the float. Yeah, well, I've got them. They're pretty full. How do you set it up in the rod holder? Okay. So a bit of that slack line. That's in the rod holder. My drag's already preset. Okay. Bail arm open. Bail arm open. On a windy day, I'll sort of perhaps use a little pebble just to keep. Okay. My line from floating out. Yep. It's as simple as that. Okay. And obviously, when a fish takes, doesn't feel a thing. It it's just it free running. Yeah. yeah that's it just, good. just yeah. flies out. Okay. And the yeah. last thing, the majority of your line needs to float. You don't want it sinking down, so you treat it with muslin or Cortland dab. Or yeah, a, a floatant. Float. Yep. But the last 20 feet. That's yeah. Keep that clean. Keep that's that just clean natural line. To sink down. That's right. Yeah. Mud eye to get right down. Yeah. Exactly yeah. right. Oh well. And I've got some of that muslin here. I'll go through that now on that rod. Okay. Show you how it's done. Sure. Okay. And then I'll have a fish with this one. Yeah. So before we put a mud eye on it, we'll just yep. free cast him out now. Okay. Have we got that muslin handy, Bill? Have we? Yep. Or... So this is just a a, gr a good cast. Yep. This. So this is what you do before you fish. Before you put a bait on. You put them out there. So that's like, that's 50 metres, 55 metres for the okay. cast. Now we're going to put some floating on it. Bill's got that handy there for you me. You just use the silicone muslin. Yeah, that's the one, yeah. Yep. Comes with a little raggy thing You can also here. use Cortland Dab. Yep. And yep. there's, um, well, there's, there's various brands. but Okay. So also... this is basically silicone treating your, your monofilament line so it'll float on the surface. So while you're mud-eye fishing, it won't sink down and snag up. and Snag up these all rocks. Yeah, all sorts of problems. The, the lake's rising like this. So you want it just snaking out over the water, floating. Yep, and it's a pretty simple procedure. Just put the line through the rag. Yep. Just hold it like that and just, just basically it just winding yep. it. The line through the material here. And it's just, know, self basting itself. Yeah, okay. You it, or... And you treat it to within about what? Yeah, I'll probably stop. Five you know, metres of the float. That's about it there. Okay. So like, there's a good, you know, 20 feet sort of into the bait. Okay. The tip of the rod there. Yep. And that'll stop, that stops your, your line from getting snagged up and sinking down because mono, mono line will sink will through sink. the water. Yep. Yeah. That bill, I let some more line out. Like, did you with this breeze let like another 20 30 foot of line float out and immediately um, onto a fish? Onto a fish, so 
go, this is interesting. Jeff here is fishing, fishing with us as well, with a bubble float and uh, fishing mud eyes from shore. It's got an entirely, well not an entirely different rig, but a different setup for the uh, bubble float. Just using a standard bubble float, instead of running the line through the bubble float, as in a running bubble float, he's got a fixed bubble float, but he's just put on a um, snap swivel onto it. So the line actually runs through the snap swivel. And I reckon that would probably work as well, if not better, than your standard bubble float rig. Still put your stopper here and down drop it and the dropper down to your uh, to your mud eye. Now something as simple as open bale arm and I'll just hook it on that little bit of reed there. So if I go away or I don't notice it, if I come back and it's pulled off the weed, as likely as not maybe a trout's taken the bait. Now you could also, some people just get a little stick. Just pop a little stick in the ground. There's no weed about, and just pop it on there. If your trout takes, it's really light, just pulls off, and out it goes. Nice and simple, but very, very effective. So when it's a really, really strong offshore wind like this, close the bale arm. The fish, yeah, fish won't play around with it. They'll just take it and just uh, just run on it. That's what they tend to do. Yeah. Okay, we'll see how we go. Brown. I wasn't sure at first, he was really tentative, but then he just... No, he's a good brown. I can eat a kilo. Have a look at that. He's a fish and a half, Jeffrey. Hey? He's a great brownie. So there you have it, mud eye fishing for trout in our trout lakes is fun, exciting and it rarely fails to produce the goods if you just follow these techniques that we've shown you here.